I yield back. Thank you. The chair will now recognize Mr. Gonzalez for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you uh, to everybody for being here. Uh, as a newly elected member of Congress, uh, I just want to mention first how excited I am to serve with everyone on, on this committee uh, and look forward to working on bipartisan solutions that will make the American people proud. So I believe that climate change is real and global industrial development is a contributing factor. I also believe that my first responsibility and my unyielding loyalty is to the hardworking men and women of Ohio's 16th district and the economy that allows us to heat our homes, fuel our vehicles, and build our businesses. As I look at the most recent proposal, the Green New Deal, I cannot help but believe that this would put a tremendous burden on my community. My community is proud of our blue collar roots. We are proud of the products we make, the crops we farm, and the jobs that we hold. Simply put, the Green New Deal would threaten all of that. And we only really need to look to Germany and their what I'll call Green New Deal light for an example. Since 2000, Germany has spent an estimated 189 billion euros or about $222 billion in renewable energy projects while emissions have been stuck at roughly 2009 levels and even rose recently. According to the Wall Street Journal, taxes and rising power generation costs have made Germany's electric rates the highest in Europe. In sum, they spent a lot of money, raised taxes and energy prices, and nothing really happened. The proponents of the Green New Deal are proud to admit that their plan represents a fundamental remaking of America's economy. They believe in a system that relies on a near full government takeover of some of our most important industries to solve our most pressing problems. With Germany's example and common sense as our guide, we simply know that this will not work. But it's not enough to point fingers. As I said, this is real. We do have a problem, and the government can play a role in helping solve it. What I believe is the most reasonable path forward is a path that does not focus on a federal takeover of our economy, but rather a path that fosters a diverse set of energy sources and seeks to make alternative energy as affordable and reliable as the traditional sources we use today. And for that, I do not wish to rely on government takeovers of our biggest industries, but rather I want to focus on empowering the American people and unleashing the most powerful economic force in human history. If we do this, then we will be able to reduce carbon emissions at home, but also abroad, as we are able to commercialize these to-be-developed technologies and sell them around the world. And best of all, we will do that without having to ask my community to pay a very steep price. With that, Dr. Mikett, could you comment briefly on the extent to which this is a global issue versus one we can solve on our own? And based on your understanding of global development patterns, specifically in China, India, and Africa, how feasible and realistic is it to exclude fossil fuels from all sources of energy globally? Uh, thank you for the question. I think um, you, you, you've really hit the nail on the head, right? This is a, the science tells you it's a global issue. Atmosphere doesn't care where carbon dioxide molecules come from. They have the same warming effect no matter where uh, their source was combusted, if it's a fossil fuel source. Um, what the U.S. can do uh, is work to innovate the technologies we believe we'll need to have not just uh, an economy similar to today's, but one that's much larger globally, mm -hmm. um, and finding smart ways to make sure those target those technologies make it to market. And that's an advanced research agenda, that's um, uh, kind of industrial uh, policies, and it's market and finance design questions. Okay. Um, and then cost is, is obviously very important, and I think we focus a lot on that, which is, which is right. Um, but when I speak to our manufacturers, one of the issues that they talk about a lot is reliability of the grid. Um, so if we were to switch to these technologies, um, the renewable technologies today exclusively, we turn the new, new Green New Deal on today, uh, would we even be able to manufacture? Would our manufacturers be able to rely on the grid as it's currently constructed? I don't think so, no. It seems like the lights would go off. But, it, um, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't change over the course of a few decades, which is what we're trying to do. Right. Um, and then my last question, and I, I, just, I hate these up or down ones, so I apologize, but um, when you think about the Green New, New Deal as um, you've seen it, and I know d details need to be fleshed out, do you believe that is a realistic path forward? No, sir. 
I think it, it's a broad progressive agenda greenwashed by some climate details. Thank you. Uh, 